it's me Zezri. I'm back again with another video. Currently not at home, I'm in another city for spring break, so that's why I'm in a different place. But anyways, today I'm going to be talking about Eugenia Cooney and the 10 years of drama, discussion, and allegations that surround her. Having her name in the title should be enough of a trigger warning to those who get triggered by, well, Eugenia. Because she is a very triggering person, especially to those who suffer or have suffered from a restrictive eating disorder. Because if you didn't know, Eugenia is the internet's most infamous eating disordered creator. So if you get triggered by Eugenia Cooney, maybe don't watch a video made about her, your discretion is greatly advised. Anyways, I'm sure most of you guys already know who Eugenia Cooney is, and I'm sure many of you are already tired of seeing people make videos about her. The reason why I'm deciding to make a video about her this late into the game is because I feel like I can save her. Just kidding. This isn't that type of video. I've recently been getting her TikTok videos recommended on my For You page, and these videos kind of spiraled me down a dark pathway of Eugenia Cooney lore. I basically spent the last week almost obsessively finding out so much stuff about her and what people think of her, and I found that I disagree with almost everyone's takes on her. I've watched so many videos of people trying to psychoanalyze her or trying to seek possibilities to save her, and if I'm being honest, I think that these videos do more harm than good. I believe that most people are viewing Eugenia in like a black or white type lens when the situation at hand is a lot more complicated and it cannot just be summarized into a villain slash victim story. Now I want to give you guys some context here. I am not a psychologist. I am not specialized in eating disorders and I also do not know Eugenia Cooney personally. So there are many aspects of this video that will be speculative. I know I made a video in the past where I briefly expressed my opinion on her. That video was about three different YouTubers who are deep in their three different extreme eating disorders and if you haven't watched it already, I really would recommend it to you. In that video, I concluded that Eugenia suffers from Anna, which I'm not saying the real name of to avoid demonetization even though I most likely will get demonetized anyway, which is weird because Eugenia herself doesn't get demonetized but when people talk about her, they do. I do want to mention that EDs almost always come as like a combo deal. It's always a combination of other mental health issues or maybe even other disorders so I don't think Eugenia Cooney is just isolatedly suffering from Anna but of course I can't diagnose her because I'm not a psychologist I'm just a kid and you can use that fact against me but I don't think it should invalidate my opinions I have towards Eugenia. If you don't know anything about Anna it's a mental illness which causes you to heavily restrict your food intake out of the irrational fear of gaining weight or sometimes out of the euphoria surrounding losing weight. I would call it an addiction or a form of self-harm because it's mainly developed when a person has issues that they wish to suppress or ease. That's usually when they turn to Anna because Anna gives them that false sense of control and it makes them hyper-focused on food which in turn distracts them from whatever caused them to develop their disorder in the first place. A common misconception about Anna is that people only develop it because they want to look a certain way and while that may be a pushing factor, there is always an underlying rooted cause of a disorder like that to form and take over someone's life as much as it has obviously done with Eugenia. But enough talking about disorders and stuff. What you guys really came here for, I presume, is for me to talk about Eugenia. And if you have watched my These YouTubers Are Killing Themselves video, you may have already heard my initial opinion on her. And I just want to come out here and say that I have changed my mind on her since then. You see, when I first made that video, I wasn't too deep in like the Eugenia Cooney lore. But now I am a different person. And I can proudly admit that I don't entirely agree with my past take on her. To summarize what I initially said in my last video on her, I basically said that she obviously has Anna. People should understand how hard it is for her to deal with a disorder as debilitating as that. And that her returning to the internet after her recovery was a mistake because people's comments caused her to relapse. That was Eugenia's biggest mistake in my opinion. She returned to the internet, which ultimately led her to relapsing. Now, I do agree that she does have Anna. I'm not gonna tiptoe around that. I do agree that she refuses to admit her problem and that is very harmful, especially towards her young audience because it could lead them to believe that it's somehow okay to look like her. And I do agree that comments showing concern about her or comments commenting on her weight do more harm than good. But 
I do not agree with the idea that her returning to the internet caused her to relapse. And I do not agree that it was her audience's fault in her relapse. I also do not agree with this statement. But you know, as much as I want to be mad at her and call her a bad influence, I can't do that. I can't be mad at her. People don't really realize how hard it is to get rid of Anna or any eating disorder for that matter. Because knowing what I know now, I am mad at her. I'm not gonna shy away from calling her what she is, a bad influence. And it doesn't matter how sick she is, I completely understand that she's sick. That doesn't change the bad influence she has on her audience. It simply just doesn't excuse it. I will elaborate as to why a bit later in the video. The main thing I want to point out in my original video about Eugenia is the statement I said here. Keep her off the internet. That's the only way we can prevent her almost inevitable death. I really disagree with this line because we cannot prevent anything. Us as the audience, as the spectators, we have absolutely no control over Eugenia's life. Yes, people who actively comment on Eugenia's body, people who actively support her and monetize her behavior on the internet do have a negative impact on her well-being. Because what these people are doing is they are enabling her in her self-destruction. But that being said, she didn't develop her disorder because of the internet. In fact, it is quite evident that she most likely started developing her disorder before she even appeared on the internet because she was always very underweight even at the very start of her internet career and it may be true that her audience could have worsened her condition but it doesn't change the fact that eugenia's disorder is most likely caused by things that affected her or still affect her in her personal life and her personal life and personal trauma is not something that we have any control over so even if she gets exiled off of the internet it's not like whatever demons trauma or possible abuse that she experiences will just go away it's obvious that she's a troubled individual and the only people who have any control over her health and well-being is herself, her family, and the people who are close to her. But from what it seems, she doesn't want to get better, obviously. Her family doesn't want her to get better, obviously. And the only people who we've seen who are close to her is probably like Shane Dawson or sketchy Discord mods. So I wouldn't say she's exactly in good hands. So what is my point here? Do I think that she's just gonna die and we can't do anything to help her? Well, essentially, yes. Oh come on, this is my complete and honest opinion. Is it offensive to assume that someone is likely going to die and we can't do anything about it? Maybe it is. Maybe you think I'm wrong for saying that. But I will defend my point of view. And in order to do that, we need to learn more about Eugenia Cooney herself and the various scandals that she has been involved in. So without further ado, here is Eugenia Cooney's timeline. Okay, so my full outfit guys, this is my full outfit. So it's kind of like a sailor girl kind of outfit basically. Before I say anything, I just want to clarify that this video isn't hate towards Eugenia. And I don't think it's very nice to go hate on her despite the problematic things she may have done or said in the past. It is never okay to bully. It doesn't matter who it is, unless it's Shane Dawson. Moving on, Eugenia is a Twitch streamer slash beauty vlogger. Can you even call her that? If I were to honestly label her, I would just say that she's a serial body checker disorder denier. But I am doing fine and Yeah. But that's just my opinion. Anyways, Eugenia is 27 years old. She has over 2 million subscribers on YouTube and she regularly streams on Twitch. And when I say regularly, I mean allegedly she streams almost every day and she can stream for up to like 8 hours a day. And I never sat through a whole stream of her because I have a life. And I am so sorry for those poor, poor souls who actually sit through her 8 hour streams. My heart goes out to you guys. I really do hope you get better. But I've watched my fair share of out of context Eugenia Cooney Twitch clips that have been re-uploaded and I have heard from multiple sources that Eugenia never eats, gets toilet breaks, or even drinks water throughout her eight hour streams. Which I struggle to find humanly possible but Eugenia is just a different breed I guess. Eugenia started her little exploits on the streaming service YouNow and then she moved over to uploading videos on YouTube which consisted of boring content where she just put on outfits or makeup and talks about stuff that no one would really care about. But the reason why she caught everyone's attention is because she looked unhealthily underweight and throughout her whole time on YouTube people <clears throat> Onision would harass her or make speculative videos accusing her of being and eventually one day she uploaded a video where she looked so shockingly underweight that she was flooded with comments of concern. But Eugenia Cooney uploaded this video a few days ago and 
I just really want people to send her uh, as much support and love as possible. Then she just kind of disappeared off the internet for a while and reappeared in Shane Dawson's documentary, The Return of Eugenia, where she claimed to have recovered. And everyone just kind of went like, Ah, how beautiful Eugenia's eating disorder go bye bye. She's 100% healthy now. I guess we have nothing to worry about anymore. Hey, Eugenia, you look so healthy now. By the way, tip of the day, never say that to anyone recovering from an eating disorder. It's not as nice as you think it is. But anyways, during this time, Shane Ya was a saint, our little empath savior who helps these poor souls. He's such an empath, guys. I fell for it too. But to be fair, I was like 13 when this video was uploaded. But basically, Eugenia went on this documentary with Shane Dawson where she was like, yeah, I had an ED, but I'm gonna be real vague about it. Um, I was like dealing with an eating disorder. It was definitely like an eating disorder, but yeah, they just, I guess they didn't really get too labely, but. It doesn't matter. I'm better now, totally better. I'm better now. Totally All I'm really gonna talk about is how mean people are to me on the internet. So basically, many people who watched the documentary were left with the impression that Eugenia was fully recovered, that her recovery was supported by her family, and that she suffered from disordered eating because people would bully her online. Then her former friends decided to put out a video telling their side of the story, and they claimed that the reason why Eugenia was basically forced to undergo recovery was because they felt like she had a problem and they saw that her family wasn't doing anything about it, and after trying to talk to her about it, she would just deny, deflect and refused to admit that she had an ED. So one day they planned an intervention. They basically tricked her and her overly controlling mom into thinking that they were going to do an escape room. But instead, Eugenia ended up at Jacqueline's house and I'm sure she really wanted to escape the room when mental health professionals were called in to do a 5150 on her. 5150 is basically a law that permits the detainment of mentally ill people who are danger to others or to themselves. And after talking to Eugenia, the mental health health professionals concluded that Eugenia was in fact a danger to herself so they got her detained and apparently that's what got her into an ED clinic. Jacqueline and her friends also claimed that Eugenia's mother was very controlling, that she called the police on Jacqueline for kidnapping Eugenia. She also claimed that Eugenia's mother sent her driver after Jacqueline and he allegedly tracked down her apartment and started trying to force his way inside. Eugenia's mother also apparently told Eugenia to run away from the mental health professionals and they also claimed that Eugenia's mother didn't let her go to a doctor for five years because she had a weak heart and Eugenia was afraid she would die if she went to a doctor. Now all of these things are just claims without hard evidence backing them up, but I am willing to believe Jacqueline and her friends because Eugenia herself confirmed in live streams that Jacqueline and company were the reason she had to undergo treatment and she has shown her distaste for the way the situation was handled. I felt like I was just put in like a very uncomfortable like situation and maybe they thought that that was the right thing to do but it just really really affected me like very very badly. Eugenia was very very vague when these claims were put out against her and her mom. She basically mostly mentioned how traumatic the situation was for her and how the 5150 made her want to die. She also defended her mother by saying that she was just worried for her because she didn't know where Eugenia was going. So we know for sure this story is true, but we also know that there are two very different interpretations of what happened. And Eugenia always likes to say that we don't know what actually happened because we weren't there. And I do agree with her, but I personally Personally, I'm leaning towards believing Jacqueline simply because Eugenia never mentioned the story in the documentary. He just kind of briefly talked about how there were people who were bullies and tried forcing her to recover. There was almost like some people that like never really said anything to me like before, but then like later on were kind of like kind of like bullying me into like trying to make like decisions for me. Also, it would make sense for Eugenia's mother to be overly controlling. For Eugenia to go this long without getting treatment is a mystery in of itself. Like. What mother would let her daughter get to such a point where it's obvious that she is quite literally decaying? If Eugenia stepped anywhere near a doctor, she would have been dragged into an ED clinic at the first second. So it's a believable story that Eugenia's mom was against her getting treatment for her disorder and that's why Eugenia went like five years without seeing a doctor. But anyways, the reason why Jacqueline and friends decided to expose Eugenia and her mother like that was because they felt like Shane's documentary was just an attempt to paint Eugenia and her 
her mother in a good light and conceal the dark truth surrounding Eugenia. They felt like the situation wasn't really resolved. In the end, they were definitely right because Eugenia didn't last too long in her recovery before relapsing and losing a crap ton of weight all over again. And you know, usually when a parent has a child who had to literally go to rehab because they were killing themselves, usually a parent would keep an eye on their child to make sure they don't relapse. And usually if they do relapse, they don't hesitate to take them back to rehab under the normal circumstances of having normal, non-abusive or controlling parents, of course. But in this case, Eugenia obviously relapsed. Despite her lying or denying her relapse and saying that she's all better now, she relapsed. It's a fact. And no one in her circle is doing anything about it. Not her parents who she lives with, not Shane who literally made a documentary about her recovery. They're just kind of letting her continue destroying herself and documenting it to her audience. But basically up until this point, Eugenia was always kind of infantilized by her audience and everyone always felt really bad for her. And this was also coupled with the assumption that her mother was abusive or whatever. Everyone viewed her as the poor, sweet girl who was suffering from an eating disorder up until she got into her biggest scandal yet. A recent expose has come out about Eugenia Cooney's discord where some of her moderators were extremely dangerous people and in fact convicted felons. Eugenia used to have a discord server and she had mods on that server. These mods were caught saying and doing inappropriate things with minors who were fans of Eugenia. And after Eugenia was informed that her mods were sketchy people, she didn't act immediately on it because there wasn't any proof and they're really nice guys, they wouldn't do that, they're really nice to me. She basically refused to unmod them until the situation got so dire that she was essentially forced to close her discord altogether. So after that scandal, Eugenia's poor nice girl victim persona was starting to crack and she started gaining a cult of people who just hated her, like really hated her. This was also around the time where people started calling her out on promoting and and obsessively body checking in all of her videos and streams. Look, when you view my videos, what is the first thing you notice? My beautiful face, right? Well, it's because that is the focus of the video. Imagine if I film my videos like this. What is the first thing you notice? Obviously, my body is the focus here. This is how Eugenia films all of her videos. It doesn't matter if it's a makeup video or a video literally announcing the fact that she got COVID. The camera is always angled in a weird position where her body is always in frame. Under normal circumstances, I would be like, I, whatever, she's almost 30, she can do whatever she wants with her body and she can show off all her panties or whatever, I don't care. But these aren't normal circumstances because Eugenia suffers from Anna and she is body checking, which is an obsessive practice made by people with restrictive EDs where they have to look at or show off their body constantly. This is problematic behavior because Eugenia is fueling her disorder this way. But she's also a walking, talking finspo. And other ED kids love seeing her body because it motivates them to get deeper into their disorder disorder too. Not to mention how insanely fetishized Eugenia is. I mean, why do you think there are people willing to watch her stream for 8 hours straight? It's to get off at her emaciated body. The point is, people started giving her loads of criticism for this. People's interest in her spiked, causing viewers to start theorizing about her. And one theory which caused yet another scandal is when a video was uploaded showing Eugenia repeatedly moving the same heavy box in her streams and almost always getting a donation from it. People assume that by moving heavy objects, she's appealing to the people who fetishize her. And Eugenia's response to this was defensive. And she had said many times that people are just being crazy and overanalytical, and that she just forgets to move her makeup box and remembers randomly during streams. Personally, I think it's a very dumb thing to debate about. And Eugenia only brings so much attention to these stupid little speculative dramas because she doesn't want to address the very valid and true 
true speculation that she is suffering from an ED. Eugenia always talks about people saying her hair is fake or people saying that she's moving her box to get money or whatever. And in reality, none of those things are important or even worth Eugenia wasting her energy on. But it seems like she so obsessively tries to prove herself all the time like, no guys, look my hair, my hair is fake, look, look, it's real. To be honest, I kind of wish that some of these people could like see me in person and actually like, like pull at my hair. That sounds so weird. But, like I wish they could so they could like see that like I'm not lying. But in reality, I'm sure that most normal people do not care about that stuff and we just want her to stop denying the fact that she has a serious ED and that she needs help. Virginia also recently got COVID, which caused a bunch of people to be like, well, she's dead now. But miraculously, she overcame it in about like two weeks. We used this as an opportunity to mention how she has a doctor and her doctor says that she's fine. And if what she's saying is true, I want to know what this doctor is like who is this doctor would any doctor look at eugenia and say she's healthy i find that hard to believe but after her covid controversy eugenia got into another pointless unimportant scandal this time she flashed her panties again after like the 20th time but this time everyone thought she was wearing a diaper so people harassed her about her diaper until eugenia basically broke down on stream and and here is the clip. I don't know why I'm so annoyed with you guys. You guys are so annoying. Like seriously, I'm not wearing a diaper. Shut up. You guys are so stupid, like seriously. Now, I honestly couldn't care less if Eugenia is wearing a diaper or not, but I think it's interesting how this diaper rumor caused her to break character and break down crying. But when people constantly go on stream and say that she's gonna die and that she's disgustingly thin, Eugenia just kind of smiles and says, Well, I'm sorry you think that way. You are too skinny, bitch. Um, I'm sorry, Charles. But just because of like, you know, my size or whatever, I mean, it doesn't really make me a bitch, does it? I mean, I'm sorry that you think I'm like, you know, too skinny or whatever, but you know. But it's the rumors of her wearing a diaper that pushed her over the edge. And she went to great lengths to try and prove that it wasn't a diaper, guys. She even showed her panties on stream. You know, you're not going to see much here, but you will see that I am wearing underwear. This is not a diaper. This is underwear, okay? Like, okay, Eugenia, we get it. It wasn't a diaper. Let's move on. Hey, Eugenia. Eugenia. Where are you going? So I believe this was the latest Eugenia controversy. I mean, she gets into drama like every week. So I obviously can't keep track on all of them. But basically, Eugenia uploaded this very goofy TikTok of her just walking. And it's very creatively titled Walking. People, of course, saw this as what it was, a blatant body check. So people reported this video, which caused TikTok to take it down. Not for long, though, because Eugenia got it back up and decided to hit it on her TikTok as kind of like a screw you, I guess. And it's crazy how my TikTok account got banned recently for like no reason. But Eugenia can just continue posting her weird ass content and it's okay. But yeah, she got backlash for posting this just like she gets backlash for doing everything. And it seems like Eugenia just loves every single negative comment that comes her way. She makes herself out to be like this super positive like, guys, let's just look at the good things i never want to be mean i'm always sweet and kind and everything is always okay and for a person who tries their best to have a overly sweet and positive mindset for a person like that she sure does focus on negative comments a lot i've seen so many clips of her just like spending hours just reading out all of these terrible things that are said to her and i can't help to wonder like why does she do this to herself i have a feeling that she, there's a sick and twisted side of her that just kind of loves to read out these horrible messages sent towards her. But anyways, 
Now that you know the general history of Eugenia, I want to finally give my fully formed thoughts on her. Lucina, she's such an infamous figure, many people have varying thoughts about her, and I found that I disagree with most of them because generally, when it comes to the Eugenia Cooney situation, people either villainize her, victimize her, infantilize her, bully her, or fetishize her. Starting off with the villainizing and bullying, people are super cruel to Eugenia, as I said, especially on her streams. People just generally say, the harshest and most disgusting things to her, sending her death threats, constantly harassing her, and perhaps worst of all, trying to convince her that she's gained weight, which she obviously didn't. Now, people tell Eugenia that she needs help. People tell her that she needs to gain weight. People always tell her how worryingly thin she is. And she knows it and she loves hearing stuff like that because it fuels her disorder. It makes her think she's doing something right and she's heard it a million times before. However, when people tell her that she seems to have gained weight, you can just tell how much that affects her personally. And that is generally something you should never say to someone who has an eating disorder. Order. You don't know what such a comment can make someone like that do. Don't get me wrong, Eugenia isn't a good person at all. She has done horrible things that I could talk about for hours. And she continues to do harm by simply showing her emaciated body to her audience and refusing to admit that she's sick. She is a very problematic person who shouldn't be viewed as a role model by anyone. I think she definitely deserves criticism for the many terrible things she does and continues to do. However, I do do not think it is fair under any circumstances to continuously harass her or deplatform her. I know in the past I've said that she should be taken off of the internet, but I've changed my mind. I personally think that Eugenia is not in a safe environment. I mean, there's enough evidence on the internet circling around to imply that her mother is controlling and abusive. We also know that the only people who tried helping her are no longer in her life, and we know that she pretty much only has contact with her family, who she still lives with despite being almost 30 years old. We also know that eating disorders don't just appear out of nowhere and they are usually caused by trauma or abuse. So do you think that if we rob her of her fans, the only people who have any ounce of human contact with her aside from her possibly abusive family, do you think that she would just magically get better and her disorder would just bye bye, just go away? No, she will most likely suffer even more. And it wouldn't be fair to get Eugenia off of a platform and not creators like Amberlynn Reed for example. Apart from her being villainized. He also gets victimized and infantilized. As I said, people love to view her as a baby who couldn't possibly hold accountability for her actions. I've seen so many people excuse her actions under the excuse that she suffers from a mental disorder. But guys, mental disorders will never be excuses for doing bad things. Eugenia's disorder definitely explains why she acts a certain way, but it doesn't excuse bad behavior. Like no, mental illness aren't only harmful to the person suffering from them. Mental illnesses can make someone act like a monster and we should understand that, but it doesn't mean we aren't allowed to criticize someone for their wrongdoings just because they have a disorder. She's literally 30 years old and she knows exactly what she's doing, but she continues doing it anyways because it's more comfortable for her. We talked about how going to rehab was the hardest time in her life. Well, it's because it was the only time in her life that she was ever challenged and pushed to go out of her comfort zone. To her, destroying herself brings her comfort so she doesn't want to get better. Her family most likely enables her so she's only comfortable around them. Anyone who tried getting her help is out of her life and she refuses to admit she has a problem because she knows as soon as she admits it, a 5150 might be called on her again. The truth is, Eugenia will most likely not be able to help herself. She doesn't want to get better, she doesn't want to recover and the only way she can possibly recover is if the people in her life, in her circle, take initiative. But the truth is the people in her life aren't doing that and it doesn't seem like they are gonna do it. We can sit here all day speculating that she's being abused or held captive, but at the end of the day, it won't solve anything. We cannot save Eugenia. There's absolutely nothing we can do to help her. Only she can. Only her family can, but we can. But yeah, this video was very hard to make because there's just so much darkness in this situation.
situation. I do not think Eugenia is a good person, but I don't think she's a bad person either. I think that she's just a person and obsessing over her life isn't going to make her less sick. And whether or not she dies or recovers isn't for us to decide. But anyways, let me know what you think of the situation and let me know what videos you'd like to see next. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow my other social media. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!